All right. Welcome again, everybody. We're still kind of figuring out some little hiccups, but you should be looking at a slide um, John has provided to us so he can explain some more about shutter speed and, and camera settings and get us started on this um, photography mentorship program. So welcome, John. Welcome, everybody else. Thanks, Danielle. And I'm so glad to see you sitting in the control chair and not me. <laughs> and thank goodness for Jake, too. We appreciate him. <laughs> now, the first four or five slides we'll probably review each week. So it's kind of a, a catch up and a, and a show you what we're going to do next. So this week, we're going to look at shutter speed. Um, for the whole program, we're going to divide photography into the technical side and the emotional side. And the technical side, or the buttons, we will look at shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So today, we're going to focus on shutter speed. Okay. Would you like me to hop to the next slide? Sure. Go ahead. So basically, the ISO determines how sensitive your camera is to light. And then once the camera sets the ISO, or once you set the ISO, if you take that volume of light, and you're going to split it between shutter speed and aperture. Mm. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay. So essentially, the way I think like to think about it is you've got uh, three things that compose every photo. You got shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and they're equivalent essentially. You trade them back and forth. If you need more shutter speed, you could take it from aperture or increase your your ISO. Or if you need more aperture, you can take it from the shutter speed, vice versa. So we're we're trading and bargaining and picking what we want to use, what's most important for the effect that we're trying to create in the photograph. So they really all do play off of each other. You can't just say, oh, I want, you know, the subject to be in focus, therefore I'm going to set my aperture that way. You kind of have to play around with everything. Exactly. They're all tied together. When you move one, something else has to move. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next slide gives you a good kind of overall presentation of it. The top three lines represent aperture okay. from F32 down to F1.4. Okay. And then the circles, that represents the, the opening where the light is going through your lens. So mm -hmm. at F32, you have a small opening, and at F1.4, you have a large opening. Yeah. But if you if you look at the top row, the, the size of the aperture determines how much depth of field or how much distance you have in focus. Mm -hmm. So when you're wide open at F1.4, you focus on your subject, and whatever's behind it is probably going to be blurry, and whatever's in front is going to be blurry. Mm -hmm. So if you need more things in focus, you got to stop down to you know, F5.6, F8, F16, something like that. Okay, yeah. And that well, light has to, has to come from either taking it away from shutter speed or increase your ISO to make your camera more sensitive. Okay. Yeah, so up until now, I've, I've really kind of thought of those three elements as their own. And this is such a helpful, I mean, all of this so far is making a lot of sense as to why my pictures haven't been turning out exactly how I want them to. <laughs> Yeah, these are like the, the three training wheels. Once you understand what these things do, then it's mm -hmm. much easier to, to be creative with your photography. Even yeah. if you're not shooting on manual, even if your camera or your cell phone is fully automatic, just knowing what the camera's doing will help you with your photos. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the, the, middle, the middle row here is uh, representative of shutter speed. And the shutter speed stops the subject motion, and it also helps stop camera shake if you're not using a tripod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, then, my ne next purchase is a tripod. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, remind me at the end, I'll give you a little tip before we sign off. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the bottom row is representative of the ISO. The ISO determines how sensitive the camera is to light, but it also determines the texture or the graininess of the image. So when you're shooting at a low ISO, you have a nice fine texture, but you're not very sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. If it's a dim light and you need more ISO or you need more shutter speed or whatever, if you raise ISO, um, 
it'll make the camera more sensitive, but it'll also make your photos more grainy. Hmm, okay. So that's how all those three things work, and then they're all tied together. Okay, yeah. Well, that's a help. We'll go to, move on to the next slide, if that all makes sense. Yes, absolutely. So you've probably seen a camera dial, something like this one. Yes. Does your camera have something similar? Yep, very similar. I mean, it, it might, yeah, be almost exactly like this. Okay. Well, the, the yellow circles are the two ends of the spectrum, the full auto and the full manual. Mm hmm And then the red circles are blends of those, where it's not totally manual and not totally automatic. Mm hmm So what we're going to talk about today is shutter speed. Um, on one side, you have the big S letter. Mm hmm If you set your camera to that, the shutter speed takes priority over aperture. Okay. And and over ISO. So your camera will open up the aperture and it will raise the ISO to give you high enough shutter speed. So what's an example of if you were going to take a picture of something, if you wanted the shutter speed priority setting? Oh, if your kid was playing soccer, you know, you're trying to stop a, somebody running or a horse running, okay. things that are in motion. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in the, the lower circle, you have the, the scenes, which are lens of those three uh, different legs of the photo. Mm -hmm. And the, the one, the scene that's used for high shutter speed is usually represented by a person running. Okay, yeah. You, you can spot that one in there. Yeah, right in between the, is that a little baby and then the flower? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the shutter speed modes are the S and the runner in this example. Okay. Okay. And if we go on to the next couple of slides, I'll show you some examples on some cameras. Okay. Could probably this bring a couple up at a time. So no, we might need just one at a time. Just one at a time? Otherwise, you're going to cover up the type. Right. There we go. All right, the pinhole camera. This is my favorite camera that I own. It's basically oh, wow, a wood your... Yeah, it's a wooden box that has a very tiny hole in the front. <laughs> the, the little um, lens cap there has a magnet on it. And so for this camera, the shutter speed is how long the lens cap is off the camera. Wow. It could be hours. It could be days. So that's my right. example. Wow. And how, how how old is this camera? Um, it's fairly new, actually. Oh, wow. That's very pretty. All right. Next one. There's an older camera, an old view camera. Um, when shutters first appeared on cameras, um, this is where they were. They were uh, present on the lens. Huh. But there, there weren't very many shutter speeds to choose from, and they were all pretty slow. Yeah. So it's this, at this point, it's a mechanical shutter. And so that's why in the olden days, you had to stay really still for a picture? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because their, their wet plates they were using for film had what you would consider a low ISO. They weren't very sensitive to light. Mm-hmm. So they had to use long shutter speeds to compensate for that. Uh -huh. Have you ever taken a picture with that kind of a camera? No, I'm not quite that old. I just don't know. <laughs> All right. Oh, and now we're to the new age. Yeah, for cell phones, um, there's hundreds of different kinds of cell phones, and most of them, the camera sets the shutter speed automatically. Mm -hmm. but there's a few cell phone cameras out there that let you shoot manual or let you choose the shutter speed. Mm hmm and that's on the right-hand side of this phone here. Okay. Yeah, it seems like you can play around with pictures quite a bit these days on those on those smartphones. Yeah, and but a lot of them will have the scenes, like mm -hmm. the little runner or the little flower. Yeah. So that's how that's how you would get to a fast shutter speed. Okay. So I'll go to the next one. Oh, yeah, some point-and-shoot cameras have manual mode, but 
most of them have scenes instead. So if you look at the scenes available on the screen, there's one that's kind of orange. Yeah. Oh, the guy in motion, yep. Yep, that's the runner again. So okay. that's your high shutter speed mode or scene on a point-and-shoot camera. Mm-hmm. And one more camera, and then we can go to your photos. And so a, a DSLR, a digital 35 millimeter camera, okay. um, typically will have a, a thumb dial with the, with the little yellow arrow there. Yep. And that dial turns the shutter speed up and down. Okay. Is that what, what you have on your camera? Yeah, I have a dial. I don't think I've ever touched it. <laughs> ah. I just I just go into the within the manual settings and then I can set it. But that would be a much quicker way to do it. Yeah, the dial is, is right there, and it's instantaneous, and it's, it's a lot faster. Wow, okay. Right, do you have your photos to show us? Yes. Let's see. Oh, wait, there is one more slide. One more slide. Yep, I was going to get to this one at the end, but we can talk about it now. Uh, oh, we can, go, we can do it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first picture, a lovely rock. I was very surprised when I saw the outcome of the picture once I did the settings. And this was, let's see, one, cause it's in um, fractions of a second, right? Shutter speed? I wasn't there. You tell me. <laughs> well, this is one fifth, I guess. So on my setting, I, when I looked at the, um, you know, the little info on what it was, this one, it was one and then dash five. Okay. So, yeah, one-fifth of a second. One-fifth of a second. Okay. And then can we go back and forth between these two? Yeah. Between the, the yeah. And this yeah. one is one four-hundredth of a second. So it's the exact same subject, but look at how different your two photos are by just by changing the shutter speed. I think I... Let me set these up side by side. So yeah, this is um, a situation where I finally realized that, okay, I need to be changing other stuff um, if I want the picture to turn out. Because, you know, if I was setting the shutter speed, but then it was totally washed out. Mm -hmm. so. yep, it's all tied together. Yeah, if you can put those side by side there. I know. I had it perfect. There we go. <laughs> Semi perfect. We won't call that perfect, but. <laughs> so, this is a great example of how you changed uh, the photograph completely just by changing the shutter speed. Yeah. If you look at yeah. the. the the photo on the right with the high shutter speed, what you have actually is a photograph of the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the photograph on the left, what you have is a photograph of the rocks with a thin, transparent layer of water over the top of them. Mm -hmm. So you've created two very different things by going in and manually changing your shutter speed. Mm -hmm. And I've, so I've always wanted to be able to take a picture like the one on the left. And when I was all alone out in the rattlesnake hiking, when I saw that, I'm like, yes, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can jump up and down and yell. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've done that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's um, two totally different photographs. So okay. It's really interesting. This is how you get to creative photography. So you have to learn how to use those three buttons. The shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the next two? Yep. So, so yeah, these were that probably for like 20 minutes while Karen was working with Mystery and fiddled around with it. I really wasn't that excited about these pictures, but... I thought that it did show some, you know, some, the one on the left, let's see, is 
fifteenth, and then the one on the right is one one thousand. Hmm. So, I mean, it you know it, it does display a little bit, but not as much as the, the previous pictures. I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you remember what lens you were using? Uh, I just have one lens. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a one lens gal. <laughs> So, um, the shutter speed is sort of related to the millimeter of the lens, and we'll get to that in the, the next, uh, the final slide. Okay. Um, so if you look at the photo on the right with the high shutter speed, you know the horse is in motion only because it's leaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some gravel kicked up. Um, it doesn't show motion so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you may or may not be wanting to show motion. You might be wanting to stop the motion to show the confirmation or something. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the horse on the left or the photo on the left, um, the blurred legs uh, really shows the motion, especially the, the left foreleg is completely mm-hmm. blurred out. Yeah. And so uh, if you look yeah. at the, fr- the front two legs of the horse, it illustrates um, another interesting little aspect to shutter speed, and that's transparency. Okay. If you have a shutter speed of, say, five seconds, and your subject is only there for two and a half seconds, they're going to be halfway transparent, and you'll see Mm -hmm. what's behind them. Wow. So in this case, the horse's right front leg is in the same place for almost the entire shutter speed. Yeah. left its left front leg is moving the entire time. Yeah. So the, so left, the, le- the left front leg becomes transparent. Hmm. It's kind of yeah, it's it's almost creepy. The, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it can be creepy and it can be cool, two different things. <laughs> if you look at uh, Oso, even Oso is starting to disappear there. Yeah, I didn't even notice it. I had gotten him in the picture until I saw that little blurred blurred dog image over there. <laughs> yep, that little dog on the right is a is a blurry oso. Yep. Uh, so once once you have a tripod you can use this transparency part of shutter speed to get creative. Mm-hmm. If you would have put your camera on a tripod and photographed the horse through the fence with a slow shutter speed, the fence would be perfectly normal. It would mm-hmm. not be transparent, but the horse would become transparent. Uh-oh. With longer and longer shutter speed. Huh. So that'd be fun to play around with. Cool. So so your shutter speed, it controls or stops your subject motion, and it also helps um, camera shake or camera movement if you don't have mm-hmm. a tripod. Yep. And it also controls the transparency of things that are in motion in the photograph. Yeah. So does that give you some ideas of things to experiment with? Absolutely. This those first those first slides we discussed also gives me more ideas of how to get better shots of things in motion. Mm-hmm. Shall we go Another, to the last slide? Sure. Right. Here we go. So this is my, my rule of thumb for shutter speeds. This is what I think of when I'm out in the field taking photographs. For a, a, When you're photographing something that's standing still or moving very slowly, if you take the length of your lens in millimeters, mm-hmm. say you're using a, a, a 100 millimeter lens, if you make that the denominator of a fraction, 1 over 100, that'll tell you what shutter speed you can use without using a tripod. Oh, wow. Huh. So take the length of your lens and use that as your shutter speed, as a numerator or denominator of your shutter speed. Okay. And I list some examples there. So yeah. for a for a, a slow-moving subject, you can use a slower shutter speed if you have a wider lens. But mm-hmm. when you're using a, a longer lens, you have to use a faster shutter speed. Right. Just to achieve but, the same effect. Yeah. I wonder what's the kind of general size of a lens, say, for my camera? Probably the 
2024. Um, does your camera have one lens that zooms in and out, or does can you take the lens off? I, I think I can take the lens off, yeah. So I could switch out if I wanted to, but it, and it does zoom in and out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also the XF data, uh, EXIF data. Mm -hmm. That's where you look to find out what the shutter speeds were. Mm -hmm. If you look at the XF data for the photograph, it'll tell you what the millimeter length was. Oh, cool. Okay. And in your viewfinder or somewhere on your camera, um, it should tell you what the millimeter is while you're photographing. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to just stare at my camera for like 20 solid minutes and learn every little little part of it. <laughs> uh, don't don't bother. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you say so, then I won't. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have a tripod. I've got one more bonus rule of thumb for you. Yes, please do. A tip for making a human tripod. <laughs> do you have your camera there with you? I don't. It's in the car. Okay. Well, imagine you have your camera in your hand. Okay. And you have it up to your eye. Okay. You raise the camera to your eye. Most people have their right hand with their finger on the shutter. Right. And their, el and their elbow low. Mm -hmm. And then most people typically have their left hand on top of the lens with their elbow up high. Mm-hmm. Is that how you hold yours? Yep. That's the, I'm doing it with with an um, imaginary camera right now. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what you can do to make a human tripod. If you take your left hand, turn it upside down, and put it under the camera and under the lens. Okay. And now tuck your elbows in against your rib cage. Mm-hmm. And hold your breath. <laughs> By holding the camera this way, you can go a little bit slower with your shutter speed than this little thumb here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets very still if you hold, I mean, hold your breath and hold your elbows in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holding the elbows in is, is important. Most people hold their elbows up in the air, and that doesn't help you to support the weight of the camera. So your camera is still moving just a tiny bit. You know, you may not notice it, but if you're using a slow shutter speed, the, the photograph will show it. Cool. Well, that, okay. That is a great so, tip. Maybe I don't have to go get a tripod just yet. <laughs> no, not yet. You still have lots of experimenting to do. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that will so, be my little treat after the mentorship. I'll get myself a, a tripod. Okay. So this rule of thumb is where you start. And then if you're shooting or photographing a subject that you want to stop the motion of, then you need to go up several shutter speeds. And vice versa, if you're shooting a subject that you want to blur, then you need to slow down by several shutter speeds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is all definitely getting us all on our way to understanding buttons more and fully utilizing them and taking more creative pictures, definitely. So next All right, hopefully, hopefully you have lots of ideas to experiment with. Yeah. What are, we talk what are we talking about next week? Next week will be aperture, so depth of oh. field. Is that right? Okay, yeah, that's, the, that's usually the hardest one for everybody to wrap their brains around, so I have to... <laughs> come up with some good illustrations for you. Yeah, and I'll try and get some good example photographs for, for John to tell us about. So thank you all for tuning in, and until next week, same time, 4 o'clock. Thank you, John, for being with us. Thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye.